and welcome once again to another edition of the Other People Show. Friday, September 22nd, 11.04 p.m. on 92.5 WLSD. It's going to be a great show. We're going to jump right in. Who is my guest tonight? You all know him well. He has a brand new film that's going to be screening next week at the Park Avenue Theater right beside the station here in Norton. And that's Friday 29th at 8 p.m. and uh, is when the doors are going to open. Tyler Payne, thank you for uh, joining me. Thanks for bringing me back on again, friend. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what's been brewing since the last time you were on the show. There seems to be a lot happening. So many things happening. So you showed me this lovely theater right next door. And now we're going to be showing the film there. Yes. So that's exciting. Yeah, I'm very excited. And uh, how how when 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 you saw over there, what what was it? What you had kind of envisioned? Because I know you originally wanted a drive-in. That was your uh, envisionment to begin with. But so, uh, as far as like going inside of an uh, indoor theater, I wasn't expecting it to look so good. Neither was I. The first time I went in there, I was blown away. It has like a little bit of the uh, the Art Deco feel to it. Yeah. Uh, which I think it's too nice for Carol. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've got you've got the film. Tell us a little bit. Tell us what you want the audience to know. So, one thing to keep in mind: this is not a film for children. Right. So, if you want to bring your kids, that's totally up to you. But you're you're pretty much going to bring them to a soft core snuff film. Right. So. That's on them. You're you're putting the warning out there now. I am putting the warning out there now. And uh, I'm ex- I'm I I've seen a little bit. Uh, you previewed what like 13 minutes or so? Yeah, about a 12 minute demo. Okay, at the uh, Franken Film. Oh, did you ever get your uh, award in? I did not get my award in yet. I've been in direct contact with them, and uh, the the host of the event he said that he's going to take matters into his own hands and go ahead and do what needs to be done to fix that well because you should have this already i'm i'm waiting for the picture of i i don't want you to give it away but you probably have it in mind the the picture you're going to take when you when you receive it because i've seen what they look like and it's really really cool oh i I can't wait it's amazing so i'm wanting to show it at the event itself that's when I want to show it off and then, you know, give a little bit of a, a talk behind, you know, what you're about to see. Right, right. So that way people can kind of be aware of the, the level of violence that's going to be in this. Now, is there anything that you can think of that you could compare your film to? So I don't like to, you know, compare myself to things. Right. I let other people compare me. So my favorite compliment so far was from PVD Horror, which okay. was the "This gave me terrifier vibes." Uh, okay, yes, yeah. I I, uh, I could see that. I could see that. And you said you had a lot of inspiration from the gaming world. Yes, correct. Like any, uh, because I'm I'm not as familiar with games. Um, I'm, you know, maybe the mainstream ones I've I've heard of, but um. What, what kind of inspiration do you draw from some? And what are some of the games that you draw inspiration from? So, if you like Resident Evil 3... Okay. Um, you know how, like, Nemesis is always kind of right on you. Mm-hmm. So a little bit of inspiration comes from things like that, which, you know, Terminator 2 as well is something that has that in it. Right. So that's a, that's a heavy part to this. Okay. Okay. And as far as the... Describe your. I try to. I try to. Maybe get some music that you, you enjoy when you when you when you come in. So how would you describe the your musical tastes? All over the place. Okay. I love the eighties. I mean, yeah. I think that shows in my work. Though. Right. Yes, I think so. It, a, a lot of it is. Um, it it it's like I love the color palettes that you use. Amazing. Um, in in the film, um, appreciate. Yeah, it's it looked really it, it really popped on screen too, so I'm very excited to see it on the big screen uh, next Friday as well. Oh, you get to watch the whole thing all the way through. Yes, and this is the first time publicly yes. anyone's ever going to be able to see it all the way through. So how how are you feeling now that it's a week away? Is everything in place? You feeling good? Uh, do you have any kind of nerves about it? 
course I got nerves about it. I'm showing the, you know, true raw emotion in this. Yes, and you're opening there. yourself up. This Would this be the most vulnerable time for you? Absolutely. Okay. Because it plays on a lot of different... So, in a way, you, I like to play off old past traumas. It okay. gives me a form of control. You take it and you manipulate it into a way where you find it either funny or appeasing to look at. Right. So I kind of took things that you might not be able to directly draw a correlation to, some things you can, but, yeah, you pull back from all of those moments okay. and then make it beautiful. So you're putting your your, your trauma, your, your past everything into this on screen a lot of it okay. and i also like to play off of my uh my worst character traits okay so carol is definitely rat okay and that's well that's our main star of the show now i'm very no what can you can you give away the running time an hour and 20 minutes roughly okay, okay. i think it's like an hour 18 and 20 seconds if you want it exact okay okay yeah. and i did see um I don't want to give away anything, but I the the credit sequence I will say was really cool as well. Oh, thank you. It was really uh, so. I'm ex very excited for you. I'm very excited on this journey. Uh, what has been one of the most difficult parts after you've is so the movie is 100 percent complete now. Yes. So that being said, that being finished, um, what has been the most difficult aspect other than filming itself the most difficult aspect has been the uh the marketing okay marketing has been brutal i don't like marketing and it's funny because like the other day i did a uh like a workshop talking about viral marketing and things like that so i saw a photo i think uh was did carol go no it was me it was you it was me okay. I, uh, izzy took the show okay. so um we went up, did our did our song and dance, talked about everything, and I, I, I made a comment how I liked that it was, it said, you know, viral marketing, because let's be honest, viral marketing is a crapshoot. You don't right. know what you're getting. No. You just throw it and go. See what happens. Yeah. The algorithm like you? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But that was filmed, and I'm going to get my hands on the footage as well. Okay. And the... Highlands Horror Fest on their website, they're going to upload it. And then I'm also going to upload it to my podcast on the Subliminal Show, which is on YouTube. Okay, now what is your podcast now? So I didn't want to do a podcast, but I kind of had to do a podcast. Okay. So it's the Psycho Silico Subliminal Show. Okay. And how did you have this going on last time? No. Okay, okay. I was like, no. this sounds familiar. So walk us through the, the, the reluctant podcaster so i didn't want to do a podcast but i felt like it was important to discuss certain things like behind the scenes certain things from you know mentality things like that just bring people along on the ride okay. while still in character right right so that way they can get a get a feel for you know the art with a little bit of behind the scenes right okay and yeah, so the next episode is going to be the road show slash subliminal show crossover. Okay. And then the... Is this a weekly? Uh, how often do you uh, do you have a schedule that you put these out in? Every two weeks. Okay. Every Every second Sunday of the month. Okay, every second Sunday. Well, every other Sunday. So that's right. Two, two times a month. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> that's understandable. So how long are the uh, your episodes? 30 minutes. Okay. And it takes me 12 hours to render render that down after I color it. Okay. Yeah. So, so and I do it, an hour. And where is it available at? YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Yeah. After I get 10 episodes up, I'll probably put it on uh, Spotify. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Very yeah. cool. Um, so you were talking a little bit before, the, uh, before we started the show on Friday the 29th. The doors are going to open about eight o'clock. You want to walk us walk us through a little bit what you have planned for that night? Absolutely. So uh, I'm going to be here probably around three p.m. four p.m. and just do tickets. Right. So I worked with the loading dock across the street at uh, Dough Makers, and they're going to do a special drink, which is like a cotton candy pink and blue drink. Okay. Of course, it's got to be pink and blue. Exactly. My request. 
and uh, that's going to be on a special. I believe they're going to run it for five bucks. Okay, very nice. And very nice. Then um, I believe the cluck truck is going to get set up around six. Okay. So if you want to come, go ahead and get your food, get your ticket, and stuff like that, and go ahead and get everything situated, and then go to the loading dock, and, you know, drink a little bit, yeah. and do what you need to do there. Then uh, come back over around 8. I'm going to run a pre-show if you want to sit through that. The pre-show is just going to be uh, some some music that I prefer. And then it's going to be... Uh, Maybe like set the mood and tone a little bit of the... Yeah. Okay. And then uh, play a few of my past videos, some of the other ASMR clips, some okay. of the uh, story clips. and But I'm going to put them all in order. Right. So people can get a feel for other characters if they want to sit through it. And it's I, I don't plan for it to loop. I haven't rendered it down yet. But right. I don't plan for it to loop. But if it does loop, um, it's only going to loop twice. Okay. Yeah. So this is cool. And that's going to be, uh, what time would that be? Nine? nine? No, uh, uh, eight? Around eight? Around eight is when I'll show that. Okay. Because I'll let that run for like an hour. And that's when I'll open the doors. And we counted how many seats? Uh, what what was the capacity? Ooh, fun you mentioned this. So it was like I think a hundred and forty-two. Yeah, something like that. Take. Yeah. Like give it give a few, take a few. I don't remember, but uh, eighty VIP tickets, which will be the balcony and the first few rows, and that that sold out within two weeks that's i thought that i'd read that it was sold out so congrats on that thank you thank you and which... uh did, did you expect it to sell out quickly did you did it take you by surprise or did you like yeah that's i, I knew it would i had no expectations okay I, I i dropped that because if i had expectations i'd be disappointed mm -hmm. if it didn't Same. go away so i'm just like i'm not gonna think about it we're just gonna put it out there make yourself vulnerable see what, see what happens, happens. And it, to my surprise, was very nice, which now leads me to something I want to bring up for you. Okay. So, we discussed running a film festival together. Yes, we did, yes. I told you I wanted to see how this event rolls out before I even considered it. Well, I believe we can announce that we're going to work on that film festival. I'm very happy to hear that, man. and I'm, yeah. I appreciate that, and it's going to be a blast. It we're will gonna, be. It's going to be, a, and bring, bring a lot of uh, hopefully great filmmakers out of the uh, woodwork. Hopefully. Hopefully. I want people so. to try it. I want I want total amateurs to, from the area to pick it up. Uh, I want to run some ideas by you, but one of the ideas I want to do is I want to make sure it's we start off with films strictly from the Appalachian region. Right. So as far north as the Appalachian Mountains go, as far south as the Appalachian Mountains go, but I want it to be Appalachian. Right. I can understand that. Yes. I, I like the idea. I like the idea. So thank you for uh, bringing me on board with that. Uh, thank you for That's, showing me the theater yeah. and helping me out with this. I well, appreciate it. You know, when when I when I'd seen that you had had a, a little bit of problems um, or resistance from you know drive-ins and such, I was thinking because I had filmed over there before, but I never had really been in there uh, until the radio station, and it blew me away as well. I was like, I did not expect this all right. at all, and. Uh, so I thought when you when you came here the last time, I think I thought it was like I think I think you'll like this. Oh, definitely. So uh, you know it's got that old school feel. I like that brick. The aesthetic in there is really really good. The the acoustics seem to be good when we we tested that one day. So I'm excited. So you've got a 9 p.m. Uh, you're gonna do uh, a little uh, Q Q and A, or you're gonna do that after the film? After the film. Okay. So I've yeah, I feel like people will have a lot of questions afterwards. Are you have you thought are you going to hand out any comment cards? No, I'm just going to let uh people I'm, raise their hand and yeah. Okay. And I'm going to be honest with you when I did the road show the other day, not enough questions were asked. I want people to ask questions. I want them to ask the tough questions. I want them to get in the nitty-gritty, have fun with it, right. you know. So no, not really many people asked questions last week. Or it was this past, it was what, Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday. So not, not many questions? Not many questions, no, but that's okay. Yeah. Like, um, I'm really hoping we get more more interaction for the Q&A, but if not, then we can go ahead and begin the, uh, you know, picture-taking process. So after the movie plays through, uh, while the credits are playing, if you want to leave, go for it. Uh, we'll have T-shirts and posters, which I'm going to make a new poster tomorrow. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Now, so. I can't remember where, um, 
but I was somewhere last week, maybe the week before, and I saw a poster advertising the film. And I actually took a picture. It's on the it's on my phone actually. I took a picture of it. So I'll look and see where it was, but I think it may have been uh it was a restaurant. So it might have been uh Good Times or something like that. You know, one of those type of restaurants. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. So it is is it, it is going out uh and um what about your your uh your TikTok? You want to give that out for some uh see if uh, some people want to follow you on there? Oh yeah, absolutely. So if you want to check out a lot of my work you can check it out on tiktok or instagram at psycho silico which is s-y-c-o-p-s-i-l-i-c-o okay and you've got a you've got a loyal and large following and uh how did that come about like it was it just random totally random and, like we're, like you just woke up one day and like your your videos are just viral so what had happened was I've always kind of had like a, a decent steady climb. Right. And then it would slow down. It's just the motion of the ocean at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Go and then slow, go, slow. Then on September 29th last year, I posted a video of uh, one of my props that I keep in the freezer, keep her fresh. Okay. And um, when I pulled her out and I threw her on the table, I f just filmed it because I liked the sound. I liked all the ice crunching on her. So when I threw her on the table, I, I had that video sitting on my phone since, well, we finished filming. And I loaded everything up because I was reorganizing the freezer. And when I shot that video, it sat on my phone for like four months. And then September 29th of last year, which is ironic, considering September 29th of this year, we're showing the film. Well, did you plan that? Or did no. it just happen to be that way? It just happened to be that way. <laughs> That's so... <laughs> yeah. Then... Nice. It gets even better because it's also the night of a full moon. Okay. Yeah, so right. that makes things a little interesting and fun, too. I found that out, like, the other day. Yeah, that will be really cool then. But, um... I posted that video, and I just threw my phone down. I didn't look at it anymore. Mowed grass and did daily stuff. Right. And then about three hours had passed, and I looked, and that video had like two million views. Really? I was like, no way. Not in like a few hours. And then I just kind of sat there and watched it and just kept refreshing. Yeah. And watching it go up like 100,000 views, like every few seconds. And I was like, there's no way this is real. I was like, why this piece, though? Why did it have to be something I shot with my cell phone? Why not something I shot with the S1H or the yeah. GH4? Yeah. Why did? What? Like, did you ever? Were you ever able to come to a conclusion why that one took off first? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I know why it took off. It's absurd. It's bizarre. Which you know, when people come watch the film, they'll they'll understand. Wait, even when they go to uh, your TikTok or Instagram, they'll get a glimpse. They will get a glimpse because. Tomorrow, I'm planning to post a TikTok-specific trailer, and I'm going to show the scene that has that lovely lady used in it. Okay. And there's going to be a moment where I use one of my, my favorite tools, which we'll just call the duck bills here. Okay. And uh, with, of course, our lovely lady that got 98.7 million views. Wow. That's where it sits right now. Is that the highest uh, view viewing one you have? Yeah. Very nice, my friend. Very well, nice. Appreciate. But I had no control over it. It just did what it did. Well, I, I do. Uh, I, mine are not nearly like that. But the, the, the random ones that I get is I've posted just a simple picture of a teen killer that I'm talking about. And those get the most views out of any of them. And I'm like, why those? Right. Just why those? Because I've tested it out. I've, I've posted other things and then those again. And those always get almost uh, almost a thousand each. And I'm like, why why those? Right. I don't um, know. But I started TikTok late, you know, so I'm at, you know, I need to get back on it again. But, uh, but yeah, so tell us, what can you tell us about the, do you want to tell anything about the plot of Psycho Silico? Silico Solutions? I'll give a little bit about the plot. Okay. So the plot is just a normal night at Silico Solutions. And uh, things just kind of go off the rails. Okay. There's a little bit of a power struggle between the uh, 
personality disorder and then some things get loose and have to be fixed and taken care of. So it's not a normal night. A normal night goes a little bit more smoothly. Right, right. So this this film takes place in a 24-hour span or over a night, yeah, one night? about a, I'd say 16 hours, 12 to 16 hours. Okay. Well, how did you, how, when, when did, was the first frame of this film shot? Because you've worked on this for a couple of years. Yeah. Right? So when, when, when was the first piece of footage for this film shot? The first, the first film day was May 23rd of 2022. Okay. Okay. And then our final day, our martini shot, I shot alone. Uh, which was on July 3rd or 2nd or 3rd. Okay. No, June 2nd or 3rd, sorry. But um, I had to go back up and film uh, the last few scenes completely by myself. Okay, like your reshoots? No. Oh, just for the first time? Finalizing. Okay. Yeah, because I lost all my crew. Like, I, I lost ran out of funding right. so they went back home and they had other jobs to do anyway right so they went their way then everybody else had their life that they needed to focus on because i only had a week to shoot this mm -hmm. and we shot it back to back every day with the weekend on okay then we took a couple days off then we came back i think on was it monday or sunday we came back on one day went on ahead and finished it out because we had classes coming in because the building I was working in does do classes. Right. And it's like a open co-op as well. So... And it's a very nice facility. It is. Yeah. It has a very eerie feel to it. From, the, from just the, the little footage I saw, I would totally agree. It's a, it's a labyrinth. Like, it really is a maze. You can go down one corridor and end back up in the beginning of the place again. And it's like, oh, well, wait, hold on. It's very interesting how it's laid out. So you shot all this in the, in the series of one week. Yes. Okay. So how did the how did you go about before even production pre production? Do you do you go? Do you have the ideas? You write the ideas down. You you put it into script. How did how did your process go? So for about a year, I would uh, meditate on it and visualize in my head, and I would uh, get myself into a very relaxed state of mind with uh, binaural music. Right. And then uh, that would pretty much put me in a hypnosis state. I would visualize every perspective from every character. Then I would visualize it from a top-down perspective. And then finally, I did my shot design in every perspective. I had every shot that I wanted to do. I had the story laid out. I had everything lined out perfectly before I even put pen to paper. Okay. And right now, I've already been doing this with the sequel that I want to do. And January is when I'm going to begin writing on it. Okay. Like, taking it and actually running it through the process. Because I've just recently found my catalyst that's going to put all of my major scenes together. Okay. Now, do you, um, do you just let the ideas come? Or do you set a date for something and say, I'm going to have something and start by this date and move forward? I usually just let the ideas come. Okay. And then... Like when organically it, happen. Right. Okay. And then I'll physically start forcing myself to work whenever I feel like I have enough mm -hmm. and I've saw enough. I'm like, okay, now it's time to go ahead and put, put this down. Because you seem to be a, a, a good uh, self-motivator. I and am a mean boss. Yeah, there's there. I think that a lot of people aren't uh, motivated to do things, um, especially things with, that seem unobtainable. Let's talk about motivation for a second. Okay. I spoke about this Wednesday. Okay. If you want real motivation, you truly want to get motivated. You have to light a fire under you. You have to feel the heat. And what I mean by that is you have to sacrifice so many things and put yourself in the most dangerous position, and you can't fail because if you fail, you lose everything. There's no safety net. Not very many. No. I have one safety net, but I don't know how secure that is. <laughs> that is a, if things go south, that might work. 
and then there's another safety net in play that is um what's a pretty way to word adult entertainment okay so okay. that is a backup route okay. that is plan z please god don't let me have to use plan z boogie boogie nights yeah <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we don't have to go that route. <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, you know, you gotta get funding somewhere sometimes. You do, so, you do. So I, uh, someone had mentioned once that they were like, um, it was a couple years back when I was trying to get funding for something, and I didn't want to self finance this time, so they suggested donate uh, donating plasma. Hmm. Um, now I didn't do that. Because uh, now this is going going to be odd now because I do like films like 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 your film seems to be, but I do have a squeamish stomach in everyday life things, and seeing the plasma being I uh, you know taken out and then put back in it kind of disgusted me. You're not supposed to watch it. I I know I watched some other people do it and I was like ah, I can't I can't do it, so I just went to the car and almost passed out. I almost done it, but I'm underweight and they won't let me do it. What to uh, what to uh, made made you the think about doing that? College. Okay. I needed to pay for tuition. Okay. But hey, I avoided my college debts. Yeah. Well, see, I went once in Johnson City to try to donate plasma as well. Well, I went with a friend, and then once we got over there, I, f- I forgot the reason they wouldn't let they wouldn't let her do it. But um. Yeah, it never panned out, mm. and I don't think it's, uh, I just don't think it's something I could do. I think I would just pass out uh, very, very easily. Have you ever passed out? Came close, but never actually blacked out completely. So where my mom is a nurse, um, I learned that if you duck your head between your legs when you feel yourself getting tunnel vision and blacking out, you can pull yourself back. So the idea is to get your head below your heart. Okay. So if you can do that, you'll get enough blood back into your head to where you won't faint. Actually, no, I I lied. I did pass out one time. Uh, I was riding the Batman ride in Georgia. The Six six Flags? Six Flags in Georgia. And it threw all the blood out of my head and into my feet, and I went out for a few seconds. Really? And then it hit another curve or another flip that threw everything back into my head. Horrible headache afterwards, but I was only out for a couple seconds. Okay. Okay, I've passed out a couple of times. Once, uh, when they uh, happened to uh, prick my finger, at the doctor to take a little blood. Are you sure you're going to be able to watch this movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be able to watch it, but uh, it's just like when it's my own. That's happened twice. I, I mean, really, I was on the floor. I, I told them, I said, I'm going to pass out. In like two, I was two or three seconds. I was on the floor. That's happened twice, and then once uh, when I have blood taken, maybe. 10 years ago and I watched that and I started to pass out luckily I was sitting sitting down oh, that, that helps that but helps. Uh, you know but uh, yeah I should be able to make it through if not I'll be passed out <laughs> <laughs> do you expect anyone to pass out that would be awesome if they do because that's always a great marketing tool I think when you when you've heard uh, I remember um when the movie Hostel actually first came out, that there were you know there were message boards on IMDb at the time, and you could go on there and, and people would say, yeah, you know at the screening at uh, South by Southwest, you know two people passed out and the ambulance had to come get them, and I was like, I definitely want to see that movie. If if someone pukes, please God don't puke. That's gonna be terrible. You think don't. you should hand out to little uh, brown bags for <laughs> in case people need to puke in them? I've thought about it. I oh, had you really? I don't think they'll need it. Right. But then again, you know, I have to think about normal people. Right. Like the people who wasn't subject to the things that I was subject to. See, I I went to see a screening of um, the Human Centipede Part Two. Fun. And they gave out paper bags to people that wanted them. And then they also gave a warning. They said, um, we're only offering refunds for the first 15 minutes. After that, you know, you're on your own. And I, I do think a couple of people left. But I did make it through that one okay. Well, good deal. So, you know, that's the only, actually, that's the only Human Centipede movie I've seen, the second one. I feel like the first one's better. I've heard. I read, I read the synopsis. I almost went for it, but I, I just 
need to be in the right space to uh, to go in for that one. You know what I mean? I get that. <laughs> I've never watched it. I okay. got, like I said, I don't watch a lot of movies. So. Yeah. So what do you? So <clears throat> I wanted to get back into a little bit of the the screenwriting. You know, the whole process for you. So after you're getting ready to put pen to paper, do you uh, do you, you know type? Do you actually handwrite it out? You have to, to an extent. Yeah. So I will type it out, but then due to a part of a ritualistic process, I want it written out on by hand as well. I do too. I yeah. do too. I always have actually, like this was a notebook laying over there, and this notebook has so many things, but there's, you know, each co color means it's for a certain thing. Right. And uh, I do write a lot of the script out by hand as well. Now, once you have things written you sit down, you know, day two, day three. Do you go back and reread what you've written the previous day, or do you, do you just start at that point forward and move forward? Before every session, I start from the beginning and go all the way through it, and okay. then I'm allowed to write. So the further along I get, the more I have to read, because if it doesn't hit right or something hitches or something doesn't flow, it gets marked out. Now, do you have music playing when you're writing? Usually, but it's not music music it's the binarial frequencies let's let's put a little bit of that on are you sure you want to put that on i don't know do it's going to be weird and it's going to make your head ring a little bit i like seven hertz or three hertz personally but how would that be for the uh radio audience here i don't know let's find that all right one. let's let's see this let's turn go. your volume down because it might blow your speakers depending on what frequency you pick all right let's see this is a <laughs> because I, I've heard you talk about this before. Let's see how this will be here. When I'm writing, I use seven hertz. Okay, that's what we're going to after this uh, lovely YouTube commercial. So, w what made you get into doing this to begin with? Like the uh, you know going to the the binary. So CIA documents. Okay. Yeah, I got real interested in CIA declassified. All right, let's see here. So there's a trick to this. It's two different frequencies playing in your left ear and your right ear. Okay. All right, so when that happens, it creates a uh, the third tone. The third tone is in your brain. It's not It's not real. Well, it's real, but it's not playing through the things. It's so, only in going through your head. Yes. So what that is is your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere of your brain now communicating. And it'll create more neural pathways that normally aren't there because now it's being stimulated. Okay. So you can use that to your advantage to think things through a little bit more clearly. And depending on what frequency you're using can create different effects. So if you're running three uh, hertz, it will give you more of a relaxing, calming feel. If you're running a seven, it'll give you more of a uh, it'll give you more of a focused and creative feel. Now, do you listen to this also when uh, meditating? I do. The same, the same seven or a different uh, f frequency. Depends on what my humming will, fre like humming frequency will resonate with. So I like to hum with it or okay. do an alm with it. And when you do that, it'll make your entire chest cavity also vibrate to that frequency. What's this one? Three. Yeah. Yeah. The fact I can t call it out without even seeing. No, I do like using some things like this um, as background noise in, in films, too. Yeah. Um, I was going to use some of these in film, but the guy uh, who did my score, uh, Destiny Stansberry, he said we might get a frequency overload and oh. it'll muddy up the, the audio tracks. Okay. So I was going to do uh, 7.83, which is a very positive, like, up. Was it going to be throughout the entire film? Certain parts. Certain parts? Okay. It's one that's supposed to make people feel good. So when you have contrasting visuals with a frequency that's supposed to make you feel good, that's going to make you feel a little weird. But I found other means to make that happen. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now this is the more relaxing one. Yeah, that one's the one that you I would I would use to before bed. 
Okay, what's another what's another one that you would suggest? We've had seven and three. Uh, there's some that are like up in the four hundreds that I like, but I don't have their numbers right off. I have them saved. Okay. It's like four eighty three, I think. But when when you get too high, it can get to to some interesting places. Let's see, four eighty three. Okay, let's try this one. Because I've heard I've. I know uh, there's there's a lot Radiohead. Uh, some of their albums seem to um, you know venture into this. You want to try a song that uses binarial music? Yeah, let's do. Uh, Fever of the Ghost uh, Source. Okay, here's 483 before we go there. Yeah, see that one's more of a almost like the. Because I have it turned up very low, but if I turn it up any higher, Do it will. Not. Don't turn it up yeah. any higher. That'll hurt people. Yeah, we don't want that. Too high. Let's drop that back down. <laughs> I like so, the lower hums better. Yeah, I do. I do too. So, what was the what was the uh, the song? Fever of the Ghost by Sort or Source by Fever of the Ghost. It's got a very cool music video to it as well. Fever of the Gore Ghost Source. Yes. Let's see here. There's something I want to share about this, but I I, I can't hear. Okay. Due to um, certain limitations. Understood. So you feel how that feels in your headphones? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I just had the lyric video up. That was the first one. I like this song. I love this song. Off air, I'll tell you something about it. Okay. I went on an adventure Monday. That's all I'll say. An adventure? An adventure. Did, and this song did, was a part of it. Okay. That's was it I'll would say. would it be would you say could you say it was the soundtrack of the adventure? It was a part of it. Yeah. Okay. It was the uh, we'll say it's the silica of psycho silica. <laughs> <clears throat> now, how did you come up with the um, title? All right. So, all right. So, my ex from uh, high school sweetheart days started saying, "Oh, he's crazy. He's a psycho." Of course, of course, of course. Go ahead. I'll, I'll accept that title proudly. Her mom also agreed with it, and I thought that was funny. Oh, her mother did? Yeah. Okay. Both of them did. And <laughs> then, uh, you know, of course, psilocybin, silico, silicone, and I just kind of merged all that together because I'm cutting up silicone heads right. and things like that. So then I was like, but silico, the colors, all the vibrancies of everything, everything just pops and pulls through. So... Instead of it just being silicone, it's silly times. Right. I'm very. Uh, that's a very catchy title. It, it grabs people right right away. I love alliteration. And I uh, I think it's clever. And I also think that is uh, you have it on your on your shirt. I do. I and do. it stands out. Um, would, would that shirt be um, at the uh, at the event? It will be. Okay. It will be. Now, how many different? Uh, design shirts are you going to have there you I, think i wanted three but due to the detail of the vip shirt um and how long that's going to take it looks like it's just going to be the vip design and then this design okay but we're going to work something out to where people can order them online through uh what up kate designs so what up kate okay yeah all right that down here Caitlin Tanell does a, a stellar job on her t-shirts. And uh, so you were talking earlier about uh, taking the the film on the road. Yeah. So what's your plan uh, as far as like you, you name some places, but you want to just travel the country? Pretty much. So I've always wanted to travel. Right. And uh, so since the film festivals don't like me... Uh, programming area, or not programming issues it doesn't fit our program i get it i get it but um because they don't want it I, i'm assuming for violence 
Because um, you're not family friendly enough. I'm not family friendly enough for horror shows. What? That's crazy. Uh, I mean, I've. I, uh, that's the only thing I can think of. Like me and uh, Devlin from uh, the you know the guy who did. Uh, Help me out here. Erecting a monster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, when he was telling me about it, he was like, yeah, no, I have similar issues. And usually whenever I, like, really pry and push, they tell me it's due to uh, content or, or or something like that. Or he's like, I, you know, most places are trying to go more to a family-friendly thing, even if it is a horror convention. And I have friends who are super into horror who will, um, you know, they'll, they'll take their kids but, you know, when you take your kid to a horror convention or a horror show, you're fully aware of what's going to be shown there. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you're going in and expecting, uh, you know, Dunstan checks in or something. I mean, you're expecting a, a horror movie. And what else would you expect than killings and murders and gore? Right. And sex and violence. Yes. So, I mean, what... Yeah. That is that is crazy. So, you're you're deciding to take it on the road now how would that how would you how would that go for you so i have this tiktok following and uh, i get in contact with all sorts of people so uh yellowfish productions in florida is one that's recently starting to attempt to do movie screenings and i reached out to them i saw a post they made yesterday and i was like would my film be something that you would be willing to pull an audience for because that's that's the catch they have to be able to pull an audience right cuz i'm not going to drive 12 hours away just to have five people sitting there cuz it I, I you know i got to have a little bit of cash to get down there yeah like i'm not trying to get loaded or anything i just need enough money to get there if i can get my trip paid for and i can get broke even then Success. i'll be there yep okay uh so Florida's one that I'm working on. Then Alabama with Rotten, uh, they do a horror show, which is like uh, you know haunts and things like that. Okay. To where like you go through a haunted house, and I asked them if they would be willing to do a screening, and they were like, "We've not really done many of those, but we can make it happen." And I was like, "Okay." All right. So they're so open they're to pretty it. they're they're very open to it. So Alabama's on the list. And then uh, PVD Horror up in Rhode Island, uh, they are interested in Have you been to Rhode, Rhode Island before? Never. Yeah, I've never been that far. Up. Me neither. So I want to check that out. Uh, I'm going to have to wait for Rhode Island to be more in the spring-summer season because that cold, yeah. we ain't playing with that. No, I don't want to deal with that. No, not at all. Are you, a f- are you not a fan of cold weather? Not at all. I can handle 90 degrees all day, but... You put me in, um, you put me in a frozen tundra. I'm gonna freeze to death. <laughs> I, I I totally agree with you. Or if it was like a you know a day like today, I could I could handle fall seventy degrees yeah. year round. I, I like that. You know, but uh, yeah, the cold weather. Do you do you have any? Um, is it more difficult to to do you have seasonal depression or anything like that? Used to, not so much anymore. We've yeah. got control over that uh, since 2019. Okay. We've got control over that with the uh, the micros. Okay, That's good. As much as I'll say good. here. Good, yeah, I, I know what you mean. So, yeah, I, uh, I I don't have it as much as I... But it does seem like the colder that it gets, the more the depression seems to try to seep in. It tries to, but uh, the, the trick for that is drink less... No alcohol, less alcohol than uh, anytime I feel depressed or I feel myself slipping into that, I cut alcohol out instantly. That's yeah. the first thing to go. Then try to get your sleep pattern on, on a normal regimen, then exercise. So what's a day in the life of you? Of me? Yes. That's difficult because it depends on what day it well, is. Let's take, let's take a day. Let's take, all right, let's take Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, because you had your this what the seminar. Yeah. So let's. So how do you how do you go about your your day there? So preparing for a live event, it starts off with uh, you wake up, get a cup of coffee. Do you have a preferred blend? Uh, I just uh, I think I just not really. Okay. It's just whatever's there, but I do prefer Snickers creamer. 
they have good creamer. That's so good. That is good. <laughs> that is a good one. I like uh, people will be like, "Why do you like your coffee like creamered up that much?" And I even drinking coffee anymore because it's good. Yeah. I want what tastes good. I'm not yeah. gonna drink trash. Now I have uh, just to see if I could given up coffee, but now that it's fall and winter again, I'll go back to it. Sometimes I just like to quit things to see if I have power over it or it has power over me. I get that. Um, and I have power over coffee. So therefore, like a little, for a while this summer, sadly, uh, energy drinks had power over me. No energy drinks. And, I don't uh, do those. I'm, I'm done with them. Blow your heart out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, blow the heart out. Uh, they're not cheap either. No, they're not. And they're... they're a waste. It's really a waste. They eat your teeth. Yes. And that's another big thing. They'll eat at your teeth. Yeah. So yeah, I've given those up. Um, so I'm I'm glad about that. Is the so uh, I didn't mean to interrupt about your day. So you're getting oh, yeah. up, uh, drinking the coffee. So no cell phone. You don't turn that cell phone on for at least ninety minutes. You're not allowed to turn that on. Okay. Do you uh, do that every day? I try to. That's a good practice to have. Yeah, because it'll. If you get scroll locked early in the day, your whole day's ruined. Right. So I'll get up. Take my cup of coffee, I'll sit out on the porch, and I'll make sure that I get natural sunlight in my eyes because uh, that's an important aspect to start getting certain chemicals in your brain to pump through. Okay. Now, keep in mind, I'm a psychopath, so I'm doing all these healthy mental health strategies. <laughs> you also need a water. You're supposed to drink water before coffee, but I need the coffee first, and then I'll have the water. No, I actually do drink a little uh, a little 10-ounce thing of water before. That's one of the first things I do when I get up. Need more. Get you a 16-ounce bottle. Do a whole bottle. Mm, I need to do that. See, I can do it after coffee because my teeth feel stupid, Yeah. and then I can just chug it. Then after that, I'll go and brush my teeth, wash, wash up, take a shower, do the rest of the day, actually put clothes on. Then uh, from that point, eat something, force feed myself something, because if I'm getting ready to do something, I won't have an appetite. Same. Now, do you have, uh, I would imagine that you're not someone that eats three meals per day. Not usually, no. It's usually one big meal a day and then a bunch of little snacks all throughout Same. Just until it come through. <laughs> Same. Or when working on something, I can get so engrossed in the project or whatever that I don't even eat at all. Same. And you then know? I'll feel it just hit all at once, and I'm like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Now now it hits. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're up, you're getting ready, you're out the door, you're on your way. So after that... Uh, I'll either do social media stuff and deal with TikTok, and then uh, uh, what else we'll do? We'll, we'll play with Instagram for a minute and respond to Do you have a set people. schedule for when you post things on TikTok? No, it's just whenever I feel okay. like it. Okay. Uh, I thought so. I, I tried to watch and see if there was a schedule that I could see, and I thought, I think it's just whenever you choose to... I used to do a schedule, and it used to be as soon as I woke up, but that requires me to be on my phone. I don't do that. Right. So then I started trying to do, like, around 2, and I was like, eh, no, because then I'll be doing other things, and then I'll get scroll locked for an hour. Right. I'm very bad to get scroll locked, so I try to avoid even, like, looking at other feeds and other people's stuff. And that's bad of me because I want to, you know, support, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's bad for me because I will get locked in and I won't be productive. Yep. So, um, one of the things is with all this, I feel guilty if I'll play a video game, even if, like, I feel like I need to be working on stuff. Because you don't feel like you're using your time efficiently because you're not doing something quote-unquote productive right i understand i understand so i don't watch tv like i don't have hulu or netflix anymore i don't deal with those which you know i'll pull netflix up on occasion through my brother right other than that it's i have a couple of them but i don't um i don't watch any tv as far as a tv show yeah i couldn't tell you most tv shows people tell me yeah, I might have heard of it. Have I seen an episode? No, probably not. The show that I'm currently watching, and the only show I'm currently watching, is Cyberpunk. Okay. Because Phantom Liberty's coming mm-hmm. out this month. Actually, this is the side. This is the I. I have like a Walmart has these little bottles of water for yeah. like two bucks, and I usually drink about 
probably eight to ten of those a day. Oh, okay. So you're getting you're getting a good consumption yeah. rate then. Yeah, I drink mainly water is uh, what I would drink probably seventy five percent of the time. I have to force myself to drink it. Oh really? Yeah. So you're not a fan? No. Just what would you down f- it. What would you drink other than coffee and water? Uh, Dr Pepper. Okay. I don't like Dr Pepper a lot. Pepsi, Coke. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, uh, when I was, uh, you know, when I was going through the, uh, a little bit of de- depression and, and, you know, did drink, um, Dr. Pepper would be the, the chaser often. Yeah. Uh, I like Gatorade a lot, but I don't buy it often. Yeah, same. Same. Yeah. I, I happen to have one tonight, but I don't buy it often at all. If I'm drinking the night before and I'm going to get drunk, drunk. Right. And then I'll get one. Now, when you do, you ever get to uh, do you ever say to yourself, "Okay, I'm going to uh, get drunk or whatever," and try to be productive? Like, do you oh, have... all the time. Okay, all the time. So when I first started doing psychosilico, I would drink a forty while I was working. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like, there's a few videos of my early videos. Like when I'm holding that forty, that forty's I've been actually drinking on that the <laughs> okay. whole time. Uh, so I celebrate that still with the subliminal show. Uh, the forty is my prop. Okay. And my followers get mad at me because I don't down it fast enough. I have to sip on it, friends. Yes. And I don't want to just get trashed. I'm a lightweight. No, I, I understand. I understand. I used to sometimes plan. The only time for the longest time that I would ever drink is when I plan to do uh, not not a show inside the studio, but at the home studio. Is I was like, this will be a drinking show, yeah. And then you know I do that, and that's that had been the only the only time, never on the radio, but uh, you know in the home studio, uh, occasionally that'll happen. I know? get that. You know, when I was working at some AAA game studio, whenever we had crunch time, which was very often, mind you, like especially during the holiday season. Right. Um, after five o'clock we were all allowed to drink and that was like a rule that was like yeah no after five like you have two more hours that you have to work but get drunk have fun okay and like we would we would you know usually get beers or i would i wouldn't get liquor drinks but i I had a few colleagues that handled their liquor extraordinarily well really yeah very well no one would know no one would know oh you'd know a little bit because they get a little bit more wild okay um no, they, they were extremely productive still. Like, it was very... Yeah. No, everybody was still ex- extreme. I couldn't do it. Because as soon as I started drinking, as soon as I started feeling, I was like, no. And I was like, no, you have to do it. And so I was like, no more drinking for me. <laughs> you knew, you know, you have really good self-control. Yeah. And that's a, that's a key thing for creative people and motivated people as well. So, Tyler, it's been great having you in tonight. Very excited for the upcoming screening at the Park Avenue Theater, Friday the 29th. And uh, it's over, so what did we say, 142? So it's over half, it's more than half. It's mm-hmm. two-thirds of the way. We have uh, some general admission tickets have already been pre-ordered. So I think I'm sitting at around 90 plus. Okay. So yeah. it's going to be a, a big event. Come early, the Cluck Truck will be there. And uh, it's going to be a good time. Definitely going to be a good time. I think it's going to be a good time. You want to give out some of your uh, social media? So you can find all my work on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at PsychoSilico, which is S-Y-C-O-P-S-I-L-I-C-O. And what was your podcast? Or yeah, your podcast one more time? The podcast is on YouTube, and it's PsychoSilico Subliminal Show. And I want to check that out, definitely. I will check that out on the way home tonight. Episode 2's fun. Okay. Me, Izzy, runs episode 2. I'm very excited to see this film, man. And I'm very proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it greatly. And thank you to the audience for tuning in tonight for another edition of The Other People Show. Check out all the great programming on 92.5 and the sister station, 93.5. Tyler, thank you once again. Hey, thanks for having me. You all have a good night.